I look back on it fondly. April 1st, 2022. The snow was gone. Spring had arrived. I went backpacking. This year, 2023, on March 31st, the low temperature was 3 degrees above zero, and 3 inches of fresh snow fell on top of a substantial snowpack. I still went backpacking, but this was a very different trip. March 2023 failed to live up to my expectations. The discouraging thing is that temperature data for the past 40 years shows that March 2023 was right on the average, nothing special. It was in 2022 and 2021 that March deviated from the norm. Both had been warmer than usual, and that was all it took to shift my expectations. That's common for how we humans think about the future. We tend to overvalue recent experience. This got me thinking about forest fires in the Adirondacks. On average, the Adirondacks are wet, soggy even, and there hasn't been a big fire in over 100 years. But that doesn't mean that they can't happen. Retired forest ranger Lewis Kurth, writing in the Adirondack Journal of Environmental Studies, notes that the success of New York State's fire suppression efforts have created what he calls the myth of the asbestos forest. Kurth warns that large fires are possible and that changing conditions increase the risk. The bubble nearly burst in September of 1999 when strong winds and dry conditions allowed a small fire on Bear Den Mountain to blow up, spreading from tree to tree instead of over the ground as is typical for Adirondack fires. That 1999 fire topped a ridge and looked to be headed straight for the historic AMR Club in St. Hubert's. Luckily, the averages held. The winds shifted, and Hurricane Floyd arrived with torrential rains. It's ironic that we give so little thought to forest fires today. Our Adirondacks were shaped by fire. Starting around 1890, short-sighted logging practices and ember-belching locomotives led to a 30-year stretch during which over a million acres of Adirondack forests burned. The Forest Preserve, the Adirondack Park, and the forested landscape that we enjoy emerged from that mayhem. Small, low-intensity fires started by lightning, or whatever group of humans were around at the time, have burned parts of the Adirondacks for thousands of years. But evidence for large, high-intensity fires has also been found. One such event is believed to have occurred about 550 years ago in conjunction with an extended period of drought. In any given year, the risk of a large fire in the Adirondacks is low, but a couple of dry years and a significant fire would change our perception of that risk, and those years will occur sooner or later. In the meantime, it looks like spring has finally arrived. The snow is melting, and the forecast for the next few days calls for near record high temperatures. And so it goes.